Hello. So let's first take a more detailed look at entry B. I'm going to explain entry B using an example here. Suppose there are two firms, Alpha and Omega. Alpha is the parent and Omega is the subsidiary. Alpha owns 80% of Omega. On, on January 1st, 2012, Omega issued 1 million in 10 year bond paying. So Omega issued a 1 million, which is the face value of the bond. Uh, it is a 10 year bond paying cash interest of 9% annually. So the cash interest is 9%, which means that every year, the interest that is paid by Omega is 1 million multiplied by 9%. Omega issued the bond at 938,555 with effective interest rate at 10%. So how do we get this number? This is actually uh, when Omega is issuing this 1 million face value bond, this is the money that already got, actually got because why? Why is Omega gets, get less than the face value of the bond? Because Omega, the effective interest rate is 10%. When Omega is actually paying 9% with cash interest rate. So when the effective interest rate is higher than the cash interest rate, the present value is less than the face value, uh, which make Omega getting less than the face value of the bond by issuing the bond. So this is this should be what you have uh, already learned in, in your previous intermediate financial accounting class. So I'm just uh, doing a very brief explanation here of what is happening. And two years later on January 1st, 2014, Alpha purchased the bond. So Alpha purchased it for 1,557,466 with the effective interest rate at 8%. So how do we get this number? Actually, this number can be calculated. This was based on the uh, face value of the bond, the, the cash interest the bond is paying, and the effective interest rate at the time when Alpha purchased the bond. Uh, suppose Alpha used the initial value method, what are the consolidation entries in year 2014 and the years afterward? So in order to make those consolidation entries, uh, we need to really know how to make the amortization table. Uh, I, I don't know whether you still remember how to uh, how to uh, how to make amortization table. Those should be covered in your previous financial accounting classes. But here I'm just going to go through it very quickly. Uh, how so? This is a handout that is posted on Ilan. Uh, this is actually I'm just taking the solution of the handout here. So there's a blank handout as well that you can use if you want you can use to try to fill in all of those blanks by your own first and then you can compare it with the solution but uh here for um for us to go through it I i'm just going to take the solution and i'm going to explain to you how each how we get each number on this form um actually the amortization table for Omega, Omega is the firm which issued the bond. So what is this bond for Omega? That is a bond payable, right? Mm. Sorry, that's, that's a bond. Payable. And how do we record bond payable? So uh, when when the firm, when a firm issue a bond, uh, when it has bond payable, at the time of issuance, the general entry the firm makes is to debit cash because the firm get cash, and then it will credit bonds payable at the face value of the bond. So here in this situation, the cash firm Omega get by issuing this bond is three uh, is nine nine hundred thirty eight thousand five hundred fifty five, so that is nine three eight five five five, and the face value of the bond at the time of issuance is one million. So as you can see that this bond is issued at a discount. Uh, what do we mean by a discount? Because the firm is getting less than the face value of the bond. 
So that is what we, we call the bond is issued at a discount. So obviously this journal entry doesn't balance. In order for it to balance, we need to debit discount uh, bonds payable, which is 61,445. Uh, so this is the general entry Omega needs to make at the time of issuance. And then at the end of the first year, Omega actually, because it has this bond, so it needs to pay interest. So uh, it is giving paying out cash. At the same time, it is recording it as interest expense. Then how do we calculate how much cash is paid and how much interest expense Omega should record? So the cash interest is 9% of the face value. So that's how we get 90,000. So we take 1 million face value of the bond, multiply by 9% cash interest rate. And then the cash interest rate just doesn't change. Every year it is based on, it is 10% of the face value. So suppose Omega is holding it until the maturity of the bond. And then another thing we need to calculate is effective interest rate. Actually, uh, the, the interest expense Omega should record, it is not really the cash interest it, it pays, but it should record interest expense based on the effective interest rate. So how do we calculate effective interest rate? Effective interest rate is calculated based on the book value of the bond multiplied by the effective interest rate at the time of issuance, which is 10% for Omega. So as you can see here, the book value of the bond is 938,555 for the first year. So 10% of that is 93,856. And then the general entry we should make here is, so Omega pays out cash 90,000 and this is it the interest expense it, it records is 93,856. As you can see here th there's a difference here this general entry doesn't balance. The imbalance is at the credit side and this is actually the imbalance reduces the original discount on bond payable. So in order to reduce it we need to credit discount um, bonds payable for 3,856. And as you can see here, the discount, we call it discount amortized. So the discount, we're gradually amortizing it so that at the end of the, uh, when the maturity date is there, the unamortized discount becomes zero. So this account discount on bond payable, it can be, it is going to be reduced to zero at the maturity date of the bond. Um, and because we're recording the discount on, we're reducing the discount on bond payable. So the ending balance of the discount on bond payable reduces by 3,856 and the ending balance becomes 57,590. So this is uh, at the end of the first year and at the end of the second year, we just do the same thing here. Cash interest is still 9% of 1 million, the face value of the bond. And effective interest rate, which is the interest expense Omega should record, is still based on the book value multiplied by 10%. But the difference here is book value because of, we have amortized 3,856 of the discount. So now the book value goes up a little bit, right? So now um, book value becomes 942,411 nine because the discount goes down. So the book value, uh, so the book value goes up. Book value is the difference between face value and an amortized discount. these two uh, sub accounts. So, uh, and then, so for the second year, the general entry is to debit interest expense for 94,241 and to credit cash for 90,000. At the same time, we amortize part of the discount by credit discount uh, bonds 
payable for 4,241, which is this number. And now after further amortization of the discount, uh, the amortized discount, the balance of discount on bond payable goes down further and the new balance become 53,348. So we just do the same thing again and again for each of the year until the last year we still do the same thing. And if it is, you are doing everything correct, at the end of the last year, your discount on bond payable will be zero. So what do we have left now? We only have the face value of the bond, which is bond payable for 1 million. And then when the firm finally, when the bond finally matures, uh, the firm is paying the principal of the face value. So it's the general entry is just credit uh, debit bonds payable for 1 million, credit cash for 1 million. That was the last general, that is the last general entry. But this is uh, how we make the amortization table and how do we use all of those numbers in our general entries. In order to make those general entries, it's critical. You, you need to know how to make amortization table. Uh, it, it's not hard, it's just all mechanical. Um, yeah. So uh, this is from Omega's side. Omega is the firm which issued the bond. So for Omega, this bond is a bond payable for Omega. And every period it needs to be, pay out um, cash interest, which is recorded as interest expense for Omega. And from Alpha's side, Alpha is the firm which purchased the bond. So the uh, Alpha paid 1,057,466 to purchase the bond with the effective interest rate of 8%. And this amortization table is very similar as before. Uh, the only thing is because Alpha is, for Alpha, this is an investment in bond. So normally we don't separate uh, it, no matter, we don't separate the discount of premium. We just uh, sum them all up into the investment, investing bond account. Uh, cash interest is still the face value multiplied by 9%, which is the cash interest rate. So 1 million face value multiplied by 9% and it doesn't change every year the firm is paying the same cash interest. Effective interest is uh, the same as before. It is book value multiplied by the effective interest rate when Alpha purchased this bond, which is 8%. So for the first year, the book value is 1,057,466. And we use it to multiply by 8%. That will give you 84,597. And then, um, so the first general entry, uh, actually when Alpha bought the bond, the general entry Alpha make is to debit investment account, investment in bond account for 1,057,466 and credit cash for the same amount. And then the first, after, at the end of the first year, uh, Alpha received the cash interest payment. At the same time, this is recorded as an interest income for Alpha. So the general entry is to debit cash for 90,000 credit interest income for 84,597. And this general entry doesn't balance. The imbalance is at the credit side of 5,403, and this is viewed as an investment, uh, as a decrease in the investment in bond account. So as you can see here, um, for the investment account, we don't really record discount or premium, but actually Alpha is paying more than the face value to acquire this bond. So it is kind of like acquiring the bond at a premium. So, each year we're like reducing investment in, in bond. It's kind of like we're kind of amortizing that premium over time. And then at the end of the second year, we do the same thing. So Alpha is still receiving 90,000 cash payment. So we debit cash, that is a cash interest for Alpha. 
And then effective interest is, so now alpha, the investment in bond because of the first year, uh, the premium amortized. So now the, the investment in bond has a new book value after the first year, which is basically uh, the previous book value minus 5,403. Uh, 5, so that gives you the new book value of 1,052,063. And then the second year effective interest is based on 1,052,063 multiplied by 8%. So it is based on the new book value. And then we multiply it by 8%. That gives us, so the second year interest income becomes 83,165. And then this doesn't balance. So the imbalance is at the credit side of 5,835. Uh, and this is uh, viewed as a decrease in the investment in bond account. So we basically will do the same, same every year until the last year. All of the premium should be reduced to zero. So what is the, um, before we, uh, before this bond, the principle of the bond is paid. Actually, uh, there should, the book value of the investment in bond should be equal to its face value, which is 1 million. And then when the principle of the bond is paid, alpha basically it will debit cash 1 million and credit investment in bond 1 million. And this bond, this investment in bond account will just disappear from alpha's book. Um, so this is the amortization table. And after going through the amortization table and all of the general entries, this is like a review of your previous intermediate accounting class. Now we can talk about what do, do we do in consolidation. So in, uh, in January 1st, 2014, Alpha purchased the bond for 1,057,466. And if you think of, uh, so we have Alpha and Omega. Omega issued the bond, Alpha purchased it. So if you view these two firms as one firm, actually when Alpha purchased the bond, it is like the firm issued the bond and purchase it itself. So bond is effectively retired at the time of when Alpha purchased the bond. So if you view two firms as one firm, if Alpha purchased this bond, there's no liability outstanding anymore. Before Alpha purchased the bond, it's like the firm issued that bond. So there's some outstanding liabilities. But after Alpha retired this bond, there should be no more liabilities. And then the bond has been effectively retired. So the firm has retired the bond. And because Alpha paid in excess of the recording liability, so it's recognized a loss of 110,814. How do we get this number? So uh, if we go back to the amortization table, you can see here, before, before Alpha retired this bond, which is if we use the end of 2013 number, what is the book value of the bond? The book value of the bond is 946,652. And then, so this bond is actually, the book value is this amount. And how much does Alpha pay? Alpha paid 1,057,466 for something which has a book value of uh, 946,652. So the difference is, 110,814, which means that Alpha is paying more than the book value of the bond to, to retire this bond. And is it a gain or loss for Alpha? It is a loss, right? So it is a loss because Alpha is paying more than uh, what is actually the book value of the bond. So this is a loss for Alpha. So at the time of retirement of the bond, Alpha paid in excess of the recorded liability. So we need to recognize a loss. And no further re report is needed uh, after January 1st, 2014, why? Because this bond, this liability is no longer outstanding. It has been retired. 
So after this, after, after I recorded a loss of to uh, retire this bond, nothing should be done going forward. There's no liability anymore. There's no investment, no liability. So it's just done. Um, so this is from the business combination perspective, if you view two firms as one firm. However, if you take the perspective of each individual company, uh, Omega, Omega, it issued the bond. It didn't purchase the bond itself. It didn't retire the bond itself. Uh, it is Alpha who retired the bond. So it has nothing to do with Omega. So Omega just continue to record bond payable and continue to pay interest on those bonds and continue to amortize the remaining discount each year until all of the discount has been amortized. Uh, and if you take the view of Alpha, Alpha just purchased the bond, so it didn't issue the bond. So for Alpha, it is an investment in bond. Uh, and this investment also requires periodic amortization, which was what we did in the amortization table. So each year, Alpha just received interest and recorded as interest income, and then do some amortization. And then at the end of the, when the maturity of this bond comes, uh, the book value of the bond should be equal to its face value. And then Alpha just received a principal payment on the bond. Um, so this is if we take the individual perspective of Omega and Alpha. Uh, and then uh, how do we do consolidation? So, uh, so I'm just going to, so this is basically the solution. I'm just um, going to, like instead of just writing out everything, I'm just going to uh, uh, go through it with you and explain uh, how do we get each of those. So 2014 is the year when Alpha effectively re retired the bond. And then um, when, so at the time of retirement, so when Alpha purchased the bond, the general entry Alpha makes is to uh, debit investment in bond for 1,057,466. And also Alpha is paying out cash. So cash decrease by 100, oh, 1,057,466. Uh, this is the general entry that Alpha makes. Uh, for, from Omega's perspective, if you view two firms as individual firms, from Omega's perspective, Omega doesn't know anything. It just knows that it issued that bond. It doesn't really care who purchased the bond. So Omega doesn't need to do anything at this point. And if you view two firms as one firm and uh, effectively at the time of the, when Alpha purchased this bond, this bond should be viewed as retired. And what general entry should we make to retire this bond? We basically write off everything of the bond on the firm's book. And then uh, we record what, how much we paid to retire this bond. And the difference becomes either a gain on retirement of bond or loss on retirement of bond. So let's first look at, at January 1st, 2014, what is uh, the amount that is on the firm's book regarding this bond? So let's go back to the amortization table. So as you can see here, that uh, when the firm retired the bond, the bond has a book value of 946,652. And then this is made up of the face value and the uh, amortized discount. So basically the accounts that is left on the firm's book is a bond payable of 1 million and discount on bond payable of 53,348. So th those are the two accounts we need to write off from the firm's book. Oh, sorry. So in order to write it off, uh, we debit bonds payable 1 million because the bond payable dependence is at the credit side. In order to write it off, we need to debit bonds payable for 1 million. And for discount on bond payable, the balance is at the debit side. So in order to write it off, we credit this count of bonds payable for 53,348. And then also the firm uses paid out cash, 1,057,466 to retire this bond. So cash goes down by this amount. And this general entry doesn't balance. So the imbalance is at the debit side of 
110,814. And this should be, the, this is, is a loss on retirement of bond for the firm. So if you view this two firm size one firm, this is the general entry you should make. And then what we need to do in consolidation is we need to, um, we take alpha and omega and we need to make it as if the two firms are one firm. So in order to make it as if two firms uh, is one firm, we need to first uh, record loss on retirement of bound for 110,814. The cash payment is, sorry. So the cash payment uh, is record, recorded on Alpha's book is the correct amount that should be recorded uh, if we view two firms as one firm. So nothing should be done here. Investment in bonds, uh, Alpha recorded 1,057,466. But if you view two firms as one firm after retirement of this bond, there's no investment in bond account. There's actually never investment in bond account. So in the consolidation entry, we need to write this amount off by credit investment in bond for 1,057,466. Uh, bond payable, so no one recorded uh, any reduction in bond payable, but actually when the firm retired the bond, bond payable goes, goes, uh, goes down. So in order to make it as if two firms is one firm, we need to record, we need to debit bonds payable of 1 million. A discount on bond payable, Omega didn't need to write it off, and Alpha has nothing to do with it. But if you view two firms as one firm, this account should be written off. So we credit discount on bond payable of 53,348. So this is the first general entry we need to make in the year 2014. And the second general entry we need to make in the year 2014 is actually at the end of the year. At the end of the year, what is for Alpha and Omega? So for Alpha, this is still a bond payable on Alpha's book. Uh, the, sorry, so, sorry. So for Omega, this is still a bond payable on Omega's book. So it doesn't care who purchased this bond because it's not Omega itself who purchased the bond. So whoever purchased the bond, it has nothing to do with Omega. And for Alpha, this is an investment in bond for Alpha. So Alpha didn't care who is the issuance of the bond. As long as Alpha itself is not the issuance of the bond, uh, it is always an investment in bond for Alpha. So for Alpha, because it is an investment in bond, Alpha is getting, at the end of the year, Alpha is getting the interest payment on the bond for 90,000. It needs to record interest interest income for 94,597. How do we get this number? Please go back to your amortization table. Um, like we, you can find it in your amortization table, we just covered it. And then the difference between these two, that is uh, viewed as a decrease in the investment in bond account, 5,403. So this is for alpha. And for Omega, this is a bond payable for Omega. So Omega needs to, as a, as a bond, as a liability for Omega, Omega needs to pay out uh, cash interest every, every year. So Omega pays out 90,000 cash interest. And this is recorded as an interest expense, 94,665. How do we get this number? Please go back to the amortization table. Uh, and then the difference between these two, 4,665, 4, this is viewed as discount on bond payable. So those are the two general entries two firms make uh, on their book. And if you view two firms as one firm after the retirement of the bond, nothing needs to be done. So this bond no longer exists. Uh, it is done for the, if you view two firms as one firm. So the second general consolidation and the second part of this consolidation entry is actually to, um, we take alpha and we take omega, we take, uh, we make it as if like nothing needs to be done. So we need to reverse the interest income recorded on alpha's book. We need to reverse the interest expense recorded on omega's book. 
So the cash already can the cash payment alpha pay uh, omega pays to alpha already cancel each other out. I need we we also need to reduce uh reverse the reduction the reduction in the investment in bonds account as well as the reduction in discount on bonds payable. So this is the second part of the consolidation entry. And if we take entry one and entry two, we combine these two entries. That will give you your entry B, which is basically we have loss on retirement of bond, interest income, bonds payable, and then we credit discount of bond payable, credit investment in bond account, and we credit interest expense account. So this is how you get entry B. Uh, this is actually um, the uh, more basic way that you get entry B. There's also a more easy way you can get the same entry B. Uh, and I'm going to teach you how to get that. So basically we use entry B, it's just to do um, basically two things. So at the end of 2014, if you look at two firms as one firm, this bond does not exist. But if you look at Omega, Omega, so this bond is still a bond payable on, on Omega's book. So what we need to do, the first thing we need to do is to write off everything, to undo everything Omega has regarding this bond uh, from Omega's book. And basically on Omega's book, Omega has recorded, bond, has a, on the balance sheet, it has a bond payable of 1 million. It has discount on bond payable of 48,683. How do we get this number? It's basically at the end of 2014, we just look at the second, second row here. So at the end of the 2014, the face value is still 1 million. However, the ending balance for the discount on bond payable becomes 48,683. So we need to write off these two accounts. And we also need to write off the interest expense paid, 94,665 interest expense paid by Omega during the year. So this is basically how we get these three numbers, bonds payable, face value, discount on bond payable and interest expense recorded during the year. And then the second thing we need to do is on Alpha's book, this is recorded as an investment in bond for Alpha. So we basically we need to write it off from Alpha's book. What do we have on Alpha's book? So again, let's go to the amortization table. The year at the end of the year 2014, the book value of the bond on Alpha's book is. 1,052,063. And then the interest income the firm recorded is 84,597. So we basically, we need to write off these two accounts. Uh, invest, we need to write off investment in bond, write off interest income. So this is basically what this general a entry is, except this account. So we write off bonds payable, write off discount on bond payable, uh, write off the interest expense. Those are from Omega's book. And we write off investment in bond, write off interest income from Alpha's book. And this general entry won't balance. So the whatever the imbalance, it goes to either a loss on retirement of bond or gain on retirement of the bond, depending on <clears throat> whether it is at the debit side or credit side, which side this imbalance is. <clears throat> 